Our next speaker is Eric Weiss. My girlfriend wore combat boots. Eric Weiss. <laughs> At ease. Pledges? You have been pledging this military fraternity for the last six months. But for me, it seems like six years. Yes, you are so bad, you almost make me look bad. I would flunk the lot of you right now and send you back home to your mummies. But I am too compassionate, and no, they don't want you either. Yes, but if any of you have not been paying attention, it is time that you finally do so. You knucklehead should know by now, I am Sergeant Barbara Caliendo. And I am your sergeant not only because I am one year wiser, I am also your sergeant because I am smarter. And yes, I am more beautiful. There is no one else in this corps who can make this burnt brown and swamp green look sexy. Yes, sexy. But in this entire pledged class, there is one of you that is even worse than the rest. Weiss, get your miserable hide up here and start giving me push-ups. Now, Pledge. Weiss, you have been over 10 minutes late to every single event this year. Now that might work for you at your favorite sorority, where they wait in breathless anticipation for your arrival and swoon at the sight of you. But this here is the Army, and we have minimum standards here, Weiss. Minimum standards that you aren't even meeting. I can see it now. Some mental midget in logistics is going to put you in charge of our reinforcements. And we're going to be out in combat, and they're going to be coming close, and they're going to be bayoneting us, and we're going to be bleeding everywhere. Blood's going to be gushing, blah, blah, blah. And we're saying, where, where, where is Weiss? Why is he always late? Where are reinforcements? Why, Pledge? Why? One hundred and twenty-five, one hundred and twenty-six. Well, in accordance with standard military protocol, I'm worthless and weak. There is no excuse. However, in my defense, I would say you look very much alive to me, sir. <laughs> sir, sir, do I look like a sir to you? What type of borderline illiterate are you, Weiss? How did you get into Harvard, anyways? Did your daddy write a big check? Who did he hire to take the SATs? Who did he bribe to get you in? Oh. Don't even bother answering. I know how tough it is for you to breathe and think at the same time. You know, I'm beginning to think here, Weiss, that maybe there's some other reason that you just don't appreciate me. I'm beginning to think that mm, you have a testosterone deficit. Yes, uh, did you have a childhood accident? Are your testicles fully distended? <laughs> 239, 240. No problem down there. I've got a double-barreled shotgun with a full load, sir. <laughs> sir? Sir? You know, Weiss, you seem to have a problem with the birds and the bees, and I think I'm just going to have to explain it to you with tiny little words, very slowly, so you can understand. Now, is this an Arnold Schwarzenegger arm? Is this strong and masculine, brimming with power and muscle? Is it, oh, so smelly and hairy? No, this is my arm, and it's thin and smooth, and it sags in the middle. And that's because it's filled with cellulite. That means fat. And yet it's so, it's so hairless, and it oh, smells delightful. And these, Weiss, are these hard, strong, masculine pectoral muscles? No. These are huge mountains, worlds of joy and pleasure. But not for you, Weiss. Not for you. And why? Because you don't appreciate them. You don't appreciate me. So you will never know what you have missed. Four hundred and fifty-six, four hundred and fifty-seven. Well, I'm sorry I haven't been able to benefit from your bouncing, bountiful, benevolent beneficence. 
<laughs> Unlike every other man in the Corps, sir. <laughs> That's it, Weiss. I am not a man. I am woman. Hear me roar, roar, roar. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, after six months of grueling pledge training, I was finally admitted to the Persian Rifleman. And I got to do a pledge skit in which I can make fun of my chief tormentor, Sergeant Barbara Caliendo. What you have just witnessed was that skit done over 29 years ago. And Sergeant Barbara was so humiliated, she decided there was only one way she could get back at me. She would date me, make me fall in love with her, and then dump me, leave me emotionally devastated. <laughs> so she said yes when I asked her out to the military ball. She said yes when I asked her out for the next two years. She said, I do, when I asked her to marry me. And she said yes to each of our six children. Six children. Which just goes to show there's absolutely nothing wrong with my fully distended hairy testicles. <laughs> <laughs> she never did get around to dumping me. All according to my master plan. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I love my wife, and she is fabulous to me. She is a great mother, she's a wonderful cook, and she is great to me. She is generous, she is loyal, and she is erudite. Erudite. I mean smart. And let's face it, my wife is so soft, so squishy, so irresistibly kissable. Ooh la la! <laughs> okay then. And I think none of this would have ever happened except once upon a time my girlfriend or combat boots. Hooah! Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you.